Welcome back everybody. Today we're doing a video that I don't want to do. I've done in the past and I hope to never do again. So today we're talking about uh, what is generally deemed as being active shooter or mass killing or mass shooting uh, type of incidents. Uh, people in politics always say they want to have a reasonable uh, discussion about gun control. Well, we're going to do that today. Um, there's a bunch of stuff to get into. Obviously you're opening a huge uh, Pandora's box getting into this subject because it's very nuanced and uh, very complex at the same time. So one thing I want to go over first is uh, mental health issues, right? Um, so that is at least a factor in almost all of these shootings. Simply put, a sane person would not kill innocent people on a large scale. That's simply um, insane. It's not something that a rational sane person would ever do. Um, I am not a mental health professional, so I'm really not going to go too deep into that. I'll let you guys discuss it down below in the comments section, and I'm sure there's other uh, folks on other outlets, YouTube as well. Um, who know the subject better than I do. So I'm going to kind of move on from that and kind of talk about things I do know and do understand. If you do any research into this topic, you're going to see numbers that are just all over the place in terms of active shooters, mass killings, casualty numbers, uh, law enforcement involved uh, incidents, all of that stuff. We're going to get into some more details here in just a second. But I want to say that um, a lot of that data that you're going to see are articles that are published are politically influenced one way or the other, left or right, uh, pro or against gun control. And I tried to sort of pick a source of data that was as neutral as possible, I suppose, and that can be debated as well. Um, but we went with the FBI's report, which I believe was from March of 2018. It documents all the incidents of uh, active shooters or mass killers um, from 2016 to 2017. So there's a few things we see in this report, and I will put a link down below so you guys can do uh, the research and run the numbers um, if you so choose to do so. So a few things we see. Number one, there's absolutely an increase over time. Um, in these types of incidents here in America. Now, why that is, again, uh, we'll let you guys uh, kind of discuss that down below. Uh, but the reality is that these incidents are becoming more and more common. The reality is also that they're very uncommon if you look at it on the whole. They're a very, very small percentage of any sort of violent crime in America. And you absolutely have a better chance of winning the lottery than generally being involved in one of these shootings. So uh, very rare, however, it is possible and some things we can learn from it. So uh, during that time, there was 50 active shooter incidents as the FBI um, defines it anyway. A few things we saw, 11 of them were stopped by law enforcement officials, either you know showing up on the scene with their presence and the shooter uh, then killed themselves or the law enforcement uh, officer actually engaging that individual and stopping the threat with violence. Um, also, during the same exact time, 10 incidents were stopped by citizens. Um, of those, uh, one was stopped by the car. Actually, the a citizen drove a car into the active shooter. Um, six were stopped by armed citizens, so citizens with guns. And eight out of the ten uh, times that a citizen, not a law enforcement official, stepped in to intervene in one of these active shooter uh, situations, the threat was stopped. Um, I believe a couple of them basically just reasoned with the person uh, to put down the gun. So that's kind of where those numbers are coming from. Again, all the data is in the study below. But what you see there is, again, 50 shootings, right, or killings, or whatever you want to call it. Um, and of that 11 stopped by law enforcement, 10 stopped by citizens. So what we see there is it's pretty darn close, right? So when people say, uh, you know, armed citizens don't stop mass killings, it's, it's fundamentally false. Um, and you guys can see the numbers here below for the years prior as well. There's incidents, uh, documented, well-documented incidents of this happening everywhere. Probably the most common uh, in recent memories, of course, is the Texas church uh, where the gentleman uh, picked up his AR who lived next door and, st and stopped uh, a violent killer who was, you know, at the time, at that time, killing people in the church when he was confronted. So um, these incidents absolutely happen. Um, we obviously need our law enforcement officers around uh, doing their job, trying to protect folks, but an armed populace absolutely can and has stopped mass killings. The last topic that I wanted to touch on is the issue of gun-free zones. So again, just like with the shooting data, one thing you'll see with this is the data is all over the place. Um, one study I saw, I think it was from 2015, said that upwards of 98% of mass killings and mass shootings occur in gun-free zones. On the low end, I saw one that said 16%. It seemed to be have good data behind it. However, I want to point out that on the low end, pretty much every study that errors below 50% in terms of where these shootings occur, whether they be in gun-free zones or not, they count uh, areas with armed law enforcement as not being gun-free zones. So for instance, uh, they counted the, the incidences at Fort Hood and the uh, killing at the Naval Station as well as being uh, not gun-free zones because 
there's armed law enforcement there, if that makes any sense. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. The way I define gun-free zones is that gun-free zones are the places that armed citizens are not allowed legally to carry firearms and defend themselves with firearms, again, under the laws of that jurisdiction, whether they be federal laws, state laws, combination of the two. So that is a gun-free zone as I design it, as I uh, define it, rather. And um, if you look across these incidents, incidences, rather, again, somewhere between 16 and 98%, we'll say 60%, just to kind of put it in the middle. If 60% of these incidences are happening in gun-free zones, why are they happening in, that, in those zones? Well, they're happening because the people who are committing these killings want notoriety, want fame, and the way that they know that they can get it is to stack the body count as high as possible, as, as perverse as that may sound. So what makes more sense than to pick somewhere where you think reasonably people will be unarmed and will not be able to fight back? I mean, it's, it's, it's common sense, right? These, these, these killers may be crazy, but they're not stupid. The majority of them are not anyway. Um, so they're selecting these locations where they know or believe there's a low possibility of resistance, at least initially. They know law enforcement's always going to come, right? Law enforcement always comes but when seconds count, law enforcement's minutes away. In these mass ki killings, those minutes equate to body count, unfortunately. So um, I've never seen a gun-free zone make people safer. Again, when you study the data, I didn't see a single report that said gun-free zones made people safer. I saw some that said that there was no difference in gun-free zones versus non-gun-free zones. And then I saw a bunch that said gun-free zones made people less safe. And just the common sense of that rings true to me. If you're a criminal, where are you going to want to operate where you can get away with things, right? Whether there be no security camera, no armed resistance, etc. cetera. Um, so gun-free zones, zero data that I've found. And I've done you know, honest research on this saying that they make anybody safer. All they do is make politicians feel better and the actual people that have to be in those situations less safe. Now, on that note, let's talk about that. So if there's a politician who truly believed that gun-free zones made people safer, why have none of the governors in the states, none of the presidents, none of the senators, et cetera, why have, haven't any of them given up their armed security? Not one, literally not one in 2018 has ever done that. Now, I challenge all of them who, who you know, champion these gun-free zones, please turn your own environment into a gun-free zone. I would like you to do that. If you have that moral conviction, just like I have the moral conviction against gun-free zones, and I don't turn my world into a gun-free zone, please turn your world into a gun-free zone. I, I challenge you to stand behind the ideas that you're forcing other people to live under. Um, that's, that's pretty much it, guys. I opened the floor to debate. Um, but one thing I want to close it out and say is that uh, with that debate, a lot of people are going to say it's a mental health issue. It's a, a not reporting it properly issue. It's a law enforcement not tracking these people down issue. All of that's fine and good. If you're the person getting shot at, what's going through your mind? It's not going through your mind that, oh, America has a mental health issue. Oh, perhaps this guy's on prescription drugs that are affecting his, his mental capacity. No, what's going through your mind in that moment while the bullets are coming towards you is stopping more bullets from coming towards you. How do you do that in that moment? You or someone around you puts violence upon that person who's trying to put violence upon you. Whether it be with a knife, with a chair, with a gun, whatever the case may be, that's the easiest way and the most proven way to stop someone who's intending on doing you harm in the moment. Down the road, we're gonna have that discussion, but in the moment, trust me, if you don't have a gun, you're gonna want somebody with a gun to save your butt. That's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Hope to see you in the next video.